The more successful they are in raising the price, the more it's going to encourage shale production. Bob, welcome back to our studios here in Geneva. It's a pleasure to have you back. Okay, thank you, Celeste. Always a pleasure to be here. And today we're going to be talking about uh, talking about the oil industry, and in particular about how after the November 2016 OPEC agreement, the Brent oil benchmark rose, and the willingness of Russia to go along with this agreement, um, reaching $57 a barrels per day in January. So now it's hovering around the $50 barrels per day mark. What is the dynamic here? Interesting story in oil the last several years, so there's a kind of a bigger context uh, first. Uh, and there's, there's three, probably three d uh, players, big players, that, uh, you know, where, where, the, where the dynamism is being created. Of course, there's OPEC with Saudi Arabia and being in the, the, the lead. Uh, there's the non-OPEC with Russia being the largest uh, producer. Uh, and then there's, uh, and, and this is, uh, you know, those two really, their dynamics haven't changed much uh, over the last several years. The big one now is the United States, and that's where the revolution has been, and that's the U.S. shale oil, you know, the fracking uh, and the, uh, <coughs> the, the tight oil, uh, you know, people use different names, uh, and how that has uh, come storming into the uh, world production statistics. 2010, hardly noticed by 2014, uh, there was such overproduction, uh, U.S. production increased by 70 or 80 percent. Uh, uh, you know, from around 5 million barrels a day to over 9. And so in 2014, uh, there was the uh, decision, uh, the OPEC decision in November of 2014, uh, to, uh, which was a shocking decision, uh, you know, where people expected Saudi Arabia to uh, lead a, uh, a production cut, uh, as they traditionally would have done. They decided to go for market share, arguing that they're the low-cost producer. Shale oil, because of its technology, was a high-cost producer, so why should we suffer? They, you know, they're the ones who should cut back. They went for uh, market share, created a, basically a, market, a price war, and basically uh, it was them uh, against uh, the shale. Uh, so, uh, so the context is that uh, the shale oil surprised twice. So the first time was this unexpected ramp up of production that no one saw coming. Uh, and uh, now the second time uh, is now with the November 2016 agreement to cut prices. So Saudi Arabia basically ran up the flag and uh, said, uh, you know, we can't sustain this anymore. We're going to have to cut production uh, in order to, uh, to, to increase the oil price. And so what does that say about OPEC's ability to influence oil prices? Well, it's, uh, you know, some people say OPEC is becoming irrelevant. Uh, uh, obviously, I don't think you know, uh, that is the case. Uh, but certainly, uh, it, it's, it's uh, diminished to the extent that the U.S. shale has become uh, uh, this dynamic force. And, and the, the second surprise was during the price war, uh, people expected it, and it was, uh, uh, dozens of, of companies in the states went bankrupt uh, because of the uh, collapse in the oil price. But there was also the second surprise is that the resilience of much of the U.S. shale, uh, which is, which is uh, characterized by smaller producers, it's not the big majors who got involved, it was more entrepreneurial, small producers who, who exploited this new technology. And uh, so a number of them went up against the wall, but a, a number have survived. And the surprise was how fast they could decrease their, their production costs uh, from about 60s to $70 a barrel to into the, the 50s, even into the 40s. Uh, so at the current uh, price, as you mentioned, it's hovering around $50, hit 57 in January. It looked like the cuts were working, but that price was high enough to help regenerate shale production in the states. Uh, so now you're getting more uh, production coming on, so then you know, the market is reacting to that. So OPIC, abs obviously absolutely relevant, but this new interesting dynamic that has uh, come into the oil markets uh, in, in a way that, yeah, it's still playing itself out. And so, Bob, do you think that there will be a return to grab for market share or that there will be further production cuts? Well, uh, the uh, 
the OPEC has actually just announced, I believe it was uh, yesterday, they had a meeting uh, in, uh, in uh, Qatar where they would like to extend because the production cuts were only through June and now they're talking about extending it further. Uh, the thing with the cuts with OPEC is always, the, again, an internal OPEC dynamic. Uh, it looks like OPEC overall is adhering to uh, complying with the production quotas they set, uh, although the evidence seems to be that it's Saudi Arabia who has cut more. Others, uh, you know, some, some of the others uh, do not necessarily comply exactly. Uh, again, here, this is the other part of the dynamic is Russia. It seems that the non-OPEC producers, and of which Russia would be the, the significant one, ha are not complying uh, as uh, to the to the letter of the production cuts, uh, but uh, so it looks like production cuts will uh, uh, will continue um, and uh, uh, you, know, you know for the time being. But uh, uh, you know, again, uh, as we see, the production cuts at the moment are not being terribly successful. It's kind of this this uh, uh, you know, going around in a circle that uh, the more successful they are in raising the price, the more it's going to encourage shale production. So that uh, so we seem to be sort of trapped in, a, in an area. Obviously, all the producers want lots of money for their barrels, uh, you know, because state budgets are based on it, uh, you know, and uh, it's 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 not happening. Well, Bob, as always, such a pleasure to have you here in our studios, and thank you for coming in and sharing your insight on the oil market. Well, my great pleasure, and again, thank you for having me. That's all from myself and Robert Pillar in the Geneva studios today. But if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and comment on our website, dukascopy.tv.